What are we having for dinner tonight, folks? Duck, chicken. Should we get some rabbit? Bet you're happy about that, eh? Rabbit it is. There you go. You ever had one of those really good sleeps where you wake up feeling just bloody awesome? Well, I had one of those last night. I was woken up and, I don't know, for no apparent reason whatsoever that I can put my finger on, I just feel great. So, there's plenty of rabbits on this farm. I could go to the shop and buy. I don't know if you can buy a rabbit in New Zealand. I'm sure you can. I've never looked for it. I had no reason to, but I could probably go and buy a rabbit. I could go and buy a chicken. I could buy some heart, or some steak, some pork. It's way more fun catching your own meat and cooking it. It's way more fun. It tastes better. I don't know what that is. And of course, the other thing is on the farm, if I don't shoot the rabbits, they will have to be poisoned because they just, they breed prolifically. They get so out of control. I don't know how many, someone can answer this for me, how many rabbits eat the equivalent to a sheep, but I think it's something like six or something. There's sheep out here in the paddock. And they actually earn money for the place. They actually keep things going, so you've got to keep the rabbits down. And of course, they're an introduced species in New Zealand. We actually have a, a rabbit board, a pest control board that control them, so it's a really good food source. And it's fun hunting them. I like to get clean headshots if I can. I'm using a 22 that was gifted to the Good Bastard Club, or by the Good Bastard Club, combined with Gun City. Yeah, it's got a silencer on the end of it. Yep. And uh, the magazine. There's somewhere, but I can't find it. I put it in a safe place. And, uh, do you think I can remember where that safe place was? Anyway, generally at the end of this driveway up here, you can get behind the pine tree and you can see a rabbit. So I'll turn off and I'll hopefully report back with a rabbit. So here we go. Smoked him. Nice clean headshot. And now the fun part, rolling underneath the electric fence. Righto, where's my bunny? Oh, a bit of blood there. It's going to be a bit of graphic, but it was a headshot. And it popped his eye out. Okay, we don't want us to look at that, do we? A nice fat buck. And the, uh, the bullet went in there. And the impact has actually blown the eye right out of the socket. And just about popped the, on the other side right through. A good clean kill shot. That's heavy. He's a heavy bunny. One thing I find really odd about YouTube and how it all works is that you know mankind evolved because we learnt to hunt protein made our brains grow larger we were clever in turn our brains got larger and we thought of clever ways to outsmart animals that were larger and more dangerous than us I mean that's our biggest tool is our brain and the most simple thing about going about getting your meal in the countryside and it gets flagged or someone complains about it or it upset people and it's the most basic human thing that we've grown doing it's how we evolved it's how we you know, it's how we became, it's how we, it's who we are. And it's weird that with social media and YouTube, now the transparency of what we do, which is a good thing, has made this into a bad thing. And it's the most natural thing. And so many people will not agree with me. So many people will be upset, will be like, you know, you shouldn't do this, this is cruel, or this is, this is wrong. It's not wrong. It's, it's why we have these canines. Eye teeth, oh canines, 
What do you call those ones here? The sharp ones that tear through meat. I don't know what you call them, but uh, certainly like a canine of a dog. And I just don't get it. What do you think? Well, it was either you or it was him. And as it turned out to be, it was him. Just in time, too, because the rain's coming. I got that overhang roof over Data's doorstep built just in time yesterday. Because the rain is starting to come right now. Morning, Pope. You good, Gil? We had these guys inside last night in Bruno's box because it wasn't a cold night. And they have found something that was on top of you, an old box. And like terriers do, they have torn it to bits. Hey, if you can tear something to bits, you will, won't you? You've made a right mess. That was a box that I had my, my mincer in. Look at the mess you've made, eh? Look at the mess you've made in there, eh? What a bloody mess. Jeez, dogs. A giant jumble, eh, mate? Eh? What's the story? Come on. Bruno, good boy, eh? Good boy. Who's that? Is that Bruno, eh? Stay, stay there. Stay. Bagel. Gentle pace. Easy pace. Pace, that'll do. Calm down. Good boy. They need a good hunt, that's what they need. Going hunting tomorrow. They've been hunting for a few days, so they need to get out and stretch their legs a bit. Dogs. Bit of firewood in that pile. One of my subscribers asked, am I going to have this lipoma on Bruno's leg, this big lump here, removed from the vet? And the answer is no. It's only cosmetic. Bruno couldn't give a shit about it, neither could I for that matter. And having an operation to remove it would always uh, open him to infection which would actually do harm, so, no. Enjoy those apples. Dogs love eating apples. He's shearing the crow very well too. Hey, Probably because she's the alpha bitch. Wouldn't be quite the same if one of the pups was trying to take his apple. Be calm. Leave the rabbits out of there. Let's just have a look at your poo, mate. Make sure it's got no worms in it. That looks like one healthy dog poop to me. Old mate walking his dog down the front again this morning. And all the dogs watching. Good boy Bruno, you stay here, you leave it. Good boy. I think Poe's found a rat hole. Did you catch a rat? Have you got it? No. There's a rat in there though, somewhere. Where's a rat, Poe? Dogs, tails are wagging. There's a rat there somewhere. She'll find it. She catches them all the time. Where's the rat, Poe? Where's it gone, eh? Where's the rat? Hey, where's the rat gone? <laughs> Meanwhile, Bruno couldn't give a rat's ass, could you, Bruno? Just munching all the apples on the tree. Where's the rat? Where's he gone? Where's he gone, Poe? Where's he gone? Where's he gone? I can smell it. Where's he gone, eh? There it goes! There it goes! There it goes! Poe! 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 Get it! Get it! Good dog! Good dog! Good dog! Good dog! That's a big fat rat! Good gill! Good gill! 
Good kill, Poe. Good dog. <laughs> that's, that's a dead rat. Man. Good gill. You stuffed that up, didn't you, eh? Tore the guts out of it. Good gill, Poe. The only good rat around here is a dead rat. Good gill, Poe. Eh? Good dog. Good dog, Pace. Good boy. Catch a rat, eh? You might be thinking I shouldn't be training my pig dog to catch rats, but when you've got a rat problem around here, you encourage the hell out of it. Come on. Good dog. Only the best dog roll in the entire cosmos. Posse yum. Mmm. You can see why we have a rat problem here. We've got all of these apple trees and all the grass growing underneath them. A food supply of apples above because the apples weren't picked this year, they're all falling on the ground, creating a massive food source. And the house is just over here. So what do the rats do? They're in the grass all night and then they hop across and they go into the house and then they destroy stuff. They chew the pipes, they eat our food, I've got to hang everything up. And they eventually drove my daughter Data out of her bedroom. That's why she's in a house truck because one night she was lying there and a rat came through a hole in the wall and jumped on her face and scratched it and she had four scratch marks down her face. And she's still traumatised by it. She still doesn't want to go in the house at night and still is worried that a rat's going to get in a house truck because of bloody rats. So when the dogs kill them, I'm happy, but to be honest, they're only scratching the surface. And so is the bait stations I've got, the traps. And people will send me different ideas of different traps, but realistically, there's just hundreds and hundreds of thousands probably of rats out there. You're never going to get on top of them all. But we can certainly kill the ones around the house, and I do encourage my dogs to do it. Good dogs. Eat up. Posse yum, they just love it. And they do really well on it. Keeps them really good nick. Without a doubt it's the best dog roll here in the market in New Zealand. It's got all the good offal, the heart, the lung, the kidney of beef and lamb. But it's also got a high amount of possum in it of course. And they just do so well. Look at my dogs, you can just tell the condition they're in. And the other cool thing about it is that you don't need to freeze it, so if you're going away in the bush for a hunt, you can go away for a week. It doesn't go off like other dog rolls will go off because they need to be frozen. And on that note, if you're trying to find it at the supermarket, look on the shelves. Don't always go to the coolers or the freezers because it probably won't be there because you can store it on the shelf. Right, we'll feed Poe. Gee, that went fast. Hey, Bloody hell. Good boy, Bruno. Bruno, sit. Eat up. Good to see you in your cage there, Poe, but that's the wrong one. Over here, mate. Good kill. Eat up. Oh! Gonna eat there, eh? Okay, sweet. Right, we're gonna clean this bunny. That is how I hang my rabbit. It's called a tender hang. It relaxes all that top muscle in the back leg. If you're hanging any whole animal, that's the way you want to do it. Because I'm filming with my phone, and I've got to have one hand free to hold the phone, I'm unable to show you the whole technique of skinning and gutting, but to be honest, there's heaps of bloody videos online showing you that. So I'm going to put this in the fridge, and I'm going to hang it for about oh, 24 hours, come back to it, and cook a feed. I've left the uh, kidneys in too, because I like eating those. Dog's got the liver. They got their feet cut off at the end, Bruno got the head, the whole lot, so nothing's been wasted. Well, that was today's vlog. I uh, got a call just now from a mum that I'm helping with her son, and he's a bloody good kid. I've taken him out three times, been twice in the pines and once in the dock, and he's really good at finding his way out through the bush, got strong powers of observation, the sense of observation is really good. That's what I consider to be a good sense of direction is when people observe where they are. Last time we were in some dock country and we are in thick kanuka, just lots of stands of kanuka and every place you turned around looked the same. And I was looking at the GPS to see which way was out and he goes, oh, straight up here Clay. And I said to him, well, how do you know it's straight up there? And he goes, well, that little bit of gorse over there with the, the tops that all browned off. That was then we came in. On the other side was that broken bit of tree. And I thought, geez, how many 13-year-olds are that good at 
observing where they are in the bush. So he's got real talent with that. He's also very good at tracking. He's got keen eyes. His ears are so sharp. I mean, obviously deaf as a post anyway, but he just hears every little noise. But he's failing dismally at school. Why is that? You know, the education system is pretty good these days, and teachers do an incredible job. I mean, you try teaching a class full of kids. I mean, I think teachers are bloody amazing. Teachers and nurses, right up the very top there. Politicians should be down here somewhere. And the crazy thing is the politicians get wage rises just about every five years or even more. And teachers, you know, they're on bugger all for what they do. So hats off to teachers, literally hats off to teachers. So I will go around and talk with him because he's been taken out of school for the afternoon, I think. I'm not sure if it's a whole day suspension but he's done something a bit silly again he's just bored he's sitting in a classroom and he wants to be out in the in the bush he wants to be out doing stuff and I, I totally get that so I think our schools are getting better my daughter's outdoor education is brilliant she's learnt caving abseiling rafting kayaking uh, how to sleep out in the alpine how to make a snow cave and survive these things are fantastic that schools didn't do when i was a kid so i think schools are really good but there's always that one kid that slips through the system and that's where someone else from outside the community needs to step in and, and help so if you know a kid that's like that and you can see what's going wrong take them hunting take them fishing or kick a ball with them and talk to them and find out what it is because it may turn out that you can actually put them on the right track and they become amazing that's my two cents worth on that i wished i'd had somebody like that in my life when i was dropping out of school at the age of 15. I wish I'd had an adult to, to grab me and say, look, mate, you could do better. It took me years to work it out, and I made all the mistakes, took all the drugs, drank too much booze, did stupid things, and went down the wrong path for a long time before I found my, my way home. That's today's vlog. Be good. If you can't be good, be careful. See you later.